Hello and welcome to the Leathercraft Masterclass and in this episode of Tabletop Tips I'm going to be talking about calf leather. So what is calf leather, how it works and what I like to use it for. Now a lot of this information is based on my experiences uh, as a craftsman and I'm not going to be talking about stuff that's really freely available on the internet pretty much anywhere you go. Just Google calf leather, you'll find lots of information about it, lots of facts and figures. I'm talking about this from a purely craftsman's perspective as someone who designs and creates leather goods. So here we have three different types of calf leather. They all look quite different, but they are all from the same animal. Now, what is a calf? A calf is just a young cow. So it's cowhide, but smaller. So what you're gonna get is a thinner thickness of hide that's available. You're gonna get a thinner flesh layer, corium layer, and grain layer. And the grain is much tighter than on cowhide, for example, which can tend to be quite loose depending on how it's processed. So what I have here is a piece of Saffiano calf. So this is a printed grain on here, which is like a cross hatch. So it looks a little bit natural in some ways. It looks like a boarded leather, which would, be not, would have been done with a, a wooden board one way and then the opposite way. So the creases make these little tiny squares. But this is simply printed with a hot press to give that effect. So it gives it quite a firm surface to feel, but it's not overly stiff to work with. So it does make it very good at skiving. It holds angles and stitches very, very well. It's generally well behaved when it's being cut as well because it doesn't move around too much um, because it has that vegetable tanning element in there which stiffens it up slightly. This is a chrome tan leather. So this is a little bit softer and you can see there's no surface decoration in there. There's no dry milling. There's no uh, stamping of any kind of embossing rather of any kind of grain in there. It's just a smooth uniform surface. Now this has a little bit more of a aniline finish on there. So it's not as heavily pigmented as something like this, which is completely uniform from the flank to the back, to the head, to the tail is exactly the same. It might feel slightly different on the inside, but on the surface it's 100% uniform. This, however, is not. So it, ha it does have patches, color variation, a little bit more color depth, a bit more of a, a natural look to it, but it is softer. So it's not gonna hold high angles and stitches as well. It's not quite as easy to skive as a stiffer leather due to its softness. Now this is a pure vegetable tan leather. You're actually looking at a, a finished back. This is the outside. The inside is just polished smooth. Likely it's gonna have a pigmented surface to it or a semi-pigment to it, which gives a bit more uniformity. There are some variations of texture, but on the whole, it's very, very smooth. So this is a pure calf vegetable tanned leather, as stiff as vegetable tanned leather in cowhide, but due to its thinner thickness, it's not going to be as stiff, but thickness for thickness is about the same, maybe even a, bit, a little bit more in calf due to that really, really tight grain. This is an absolute dream to cut, a dream to skive, and beautiful to stitch. Vegetable tan calf is definitely one of my favorites to work with in general. But if you're a beginner and you're looking to get into fine leather craft, you want something that has that finesse, has that luxury feel to it, a luxury look, ages really well, and is generally easy to work with, then vegetable tan calf is probably one of the top picks to go for. I'd say it's probably the best for those looking to get into fine leather craft. So I hope this has given you a little bit more information about calf leather. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to add a comment below. Thanks for watching.